Okay, so in this video, we will start looking at uh, how to use the sketch tools for modification of the sketch entities. Let's get started with the SOLIDWORKS part and take a look at where the uh, sketch tools are located. So if you click on the tools and look for the sketch tools, this is the place where you have all the sketch tools located. A couple of them we've already looked at uh, in the previous video where we uh, learned how to do the fillet and the chamfer uh, for the modification of the sketches. So those are the two sketch tools that you can use and we want to take a look at all other uh, important sketch tools in this video. So let me create a part, start off with the front plane. Um, let's say I create a rectangular sketch here. So, and you know, if I create uh, another, just a random line, something like this. The trim is a very powerful sketch tool that you can always use it uh, while creating your sketches. So if I click on the trim tool, there are again various options here, um, but uh, the power trim is the one that is used most commonly. What it does is that it chops off uh, the unwanted uh, extended part. For example, uh, if I just click somewhere on the graphics area and drag my cursor while clicking the left mouse button, I can get rid of uh, that segment of the line. Again, this one. So wherever the intersection is there, it will chop off the area. Let's say we don't want the line segment in between this dotted line and that horizontal line. I can power trim it by swiping it across like that. Swiping it across like this. So that is how you can use the power trim. Let's say I don't want this other half of these center lines here. I can swipe it up. And that is how you can use the uh, trim option. Just the opposite of that is the extent. So if I click on this drag, uh, you know, this drop down arrow and click on the extend, extend entities. And if I just, you know, hover my cursor on this line, it will give a preview of it where it can extend it. And so again, it will uh, extend it back to it. If I just move my cursor towards this center line, as long as it can find something that is obstructing it, it will extend it up to that location. Same thing is here, okay? But if I click here, or, or if I move my cursor here, there is no uh, you know, information on where does it needs to be extended to, so it's not gonna extend it, okay? But for here, it knows that it can extend it up to this vertex here, so that's why it's showing the preview and then it will extend it up to that. Same thing here, now for this line, it doesn't know where it needs to extend because it doesn't intersect with anything else after that. Let's say if there was a line present something like this, and now if we want to use the extend entities, then it will uh, have that reference that uh, you know it is, uh, it is obstructing that line, so it's gonna extend up to that line. This line is gonna extend up to here because that's the first obstruction that it has. All right, that is how the trim and the extend um, options uh, or the sketch tools uh, will work. Convert entities. Convert entities is, uh, is a very useful option, but that is used uh, once the solid model is, uh, is ready. So we will take a look at when we do the features part. For the offset uh, entities, so if I click on a rectangle and let's say I want to create another rectangle either inside or outside then I can go to offset entities and you want it uh, either reverse or outside depending on how much uh, distance that you want let's say five millimeters something like that uh, let's say I use the uh, uh, just the default option so it's going to select uh, the quantities which are offset to it. Uh, there seems to be some issue here, otherwise it should create a perfect geometry. Let me uh, select another sketch. For example, if I 
select a circle like this and if I go to offset entities uh, you can see that uh, it can do it reverse or the outside or even you can do the bi-directional uh, by keeping that distance and then it will uh, make identical circles okay so that is how the offset uh, entities uh, uh, would work uh, let me check back again with the corner rectangle option like this and if I go to offset entities right so now it will create either the outside or inside uh, depending on how we want it okay that's the offset entities mirror entities uh, if I click on the mirror entities uh, it's going to ask you what kind of entities that we want to mirror so if I you know click and drag uh, the cursor to select this whole box so all the lines are selected all at once and then you want to copy or you just want to delete these and you know move it somewhere else it's up to you so let's say we want to copy this and we want a mirror line so I'm going to first click on the input line here for the mirror line and then if I click on the line that I want to mirror it about so you will see the preview and that is how the mirror option will work at this point we can trim out the center part and that is again a quicker way of creating uh, the part file once we identify the geometry uh, and if we think that it is symmetrical we can always make the half of it and then mirror it uh, to the other side to finish the half of that all right we're going to take a look at another uh, sketching tools as well so i'm going to go to tools sketch tools um trim extend split entities let's take a look at the split entities and the job line so if I click on somewhere here um, let me use uh, again go back to tools sketch tools split entities and if I select somewhere that's where the line gets split right now you can see this whole vertical line is continuous but if I click somewhere so the location that where I click it gets split into uh, two different line segments and that is how we can split it we can always uh, select the smart dimension to decide where do we want to create um, that split okay right now nothing is constrained that is why it got extended on that side uh, but if this length was constrained then the split point will move in the downward direction okay so um, obviously because this is not constrained none of the points are constrained right now so that is how we can uh, create the uh, split point or the uh, split tool uh, next thing is the jog line so I'm going to go to tools sketch tools jog line and if I click somewhere um, on the segment it, it comes off with this uh, yellow colored uh, slot and if I click somewhere else that you know creates the additional uh, extension to that straight line which is a jog line if I click here then it will create this cutout jog lines are you know typically used for creating the cutouts something like this if we click it from outside then it will extend it but if we click it inside then it will cut the slot that is called as the uh, jog line sketch tool the next uh, type of sketch tool um, is the uh, mirror we've already looked at um, move rotate scale copy these are um, you know fairly straightforward you can uh, uh, explore uh, these uh, tools on your own the linear pattern and the circular pattern so let's take a look at that First, let me get rid of all this um, and let me start off with a rectangular uh, sketch. Okay, let me assign the dimension here. Uh, let's say 300 millimeters by uh, 
150 millimeters. Okay, so then now let's say I want to create a circle here on this sketch. And if I use the dimension, so if I click the dimensions between the two points, it will find the shortest distance first, unless we move the cursor either to the left or to the top, uh, either sideways or up and down, then it will give those horizontal and vertical dimensions. So let's say I want to make it at 30 here. And this one 30 as well. And let's say the circle dimension is also 30. And I want to create the multiple instances of this circle along the linear direction. So that's when I can use the linear pattern. So if I go to the linear sketch pattern, direction one, how much is the spacing that you need and how many instances that you want. So if I go with the, uh, let's say 20 millimeter spacing and I want, uh, let's say four, for the Y axis, let's say I want um, four again, and entities to pattern are these ones. So you can notice that it gives the preview and that gives us a, a good idea. So if I increase the distance along the X axis and if I keep the 70 millimeter spacing between the two circles, and uh, that is how uh, you know we can uh, uh, create uh, this for even for the Y axis also. If it goes in the other direction, which is the wrong direction, I can always click on these arrows to reverse the direction. And let's say the four can't be fitted, so I'm gonna change that to three. And that is how you can uh, create these multiple instances based on the inputs uh, that we provide. So for the linear pattern, you select uh, how much is the spacing do you need and how many instances do you want along the X direction. And for the Y axis, uh, you select, again, what is the spacing that you need and um, how many uh, instances you need. So we selected three, so it created, uh, including the original one, it created three rows. And here we created the four instances. So the four includes the, the original uh, entity as well. That's the linear pattern and click OK. So um, we can create the uh, linear pattern accordingly in the sketch itself. When we go to the features, you can notice that there is also another linear pattern, but that we can do it once the feature is completed. Right now, we don't have any features. All we are working on is just on the sketch. So that is why it is called as the linear sketch pattern um, or the circular sketch pattern. So let's take a look at the uh, circular sketch pattern. And for that, let me first create a circle at the origin. Uh, let me assign some dimension to that. Let's say it's 300 millimeters. And let's say, let me make a slot here. So um, I'm gonna make a slot, something like this. All right, I'm gonna completely define the sketch this time. Um, so I'm gonna right click and drag the cursor just to the, up, in just in the upper direction. So that's another shortcut. So if I right click and hold, uh, hold and um, the right mouse button, and drag my mouse slightly upward, I can see these four options on this wheel. Uh, and you can again customize this, which are most commonly used. So the topmost is the dimension. So if I select that, then I automatically select the dimension. Otherwise you can always click on the smart dimension here as well. Okay, so I can, uh, you know, select some dimensions here. Also, I can choose this dimension and it's still going up there. So I need to constrain 
this this point uh, with respect to the end of the slot and let's make it as uh, let's say 45 okay so now you can see it's completely defined now I want to create the circular instances of the circular pattern of the same uh, entity so I will go to the circular sketch pattern the first option is to select uh, what is your circular reference so I'm going to select the outer you know the circular edge uh, and then how many instances you want to select what kind of entity that we want to select so if I click there uh, depending on how many instances we want to select uh, we can create those many patterns and we can make them equal spacing or we can just simply make them at whatever the angles that we want and if I uh, click OK here um, you can make this uh, six sketches on this uh, circle alright so that's the uh, circular sketch pattern